Good morning, guys. It's Ryan with Magnum Sports, and today we're going to talk about getting ready for the, the up-and-coming deer season. Um, I am actually going to drop in a few food plots today uh, throughout the, next, the course of the next two weeks. So that's about how long the process takes if you have the right equipment. Now, not everybody has the same equipment. Not everybody can go out and afford a tractor or, or you know, a, a way to lay down Roundup or a seed caster or anything like that. But this all can be done by hand. Rest assured, I've done it in the past, right? Before uh, I could afford a tractor, I was doing it by hand. And I was doing it with a sickle or a lawnmower or something like that. I'd put, I'd put forth the sweat, blood, sweat, and tears to make sure that I could get really good antler development in addition to the deer constantly coming through the area knowing exactly where their food is. Now, I do not plant spring food plots. A lot of people do. They're all about the clover and stuff like that. Um, I personally don't see the point because deer change pattern right around September um, and they will they will start searching for new food sources and things like that. So I don't play the early season game. I am strictly a fall food plot guy. That doesn't mean I won't occasionally plant something just to get my nitrogen levels up. I will do that, um, but it has no purpose as far as attracting deer in my mind. So um, I have a couple food plots that I have had in place for about two years now with alternating crop to make sure that we're keeping our soil pH levels where they need to be and the nitrogen levels where they need to be. Um, but we're gonna give you guys kind of a down and dirty of what it takes to put in a good sized food plot and to not overthink it, that happens way too often. There's so many guys out there that say we have to do this and we have to do that. I'm not even testing my soil this year. I have had no problem producing food plots and I don't see the need. So um, basically step one is gonna be taking down the field. So I'll show you guys the field and what we're looking at. All right, as you guys can see, here is one of our blinds on the property. Again, this is not a big piece of our property. This is just a small 40 acre piece. Um, but it produces a lot of big deer. And this is the beginning of us taking down the food plot, right? We're gonna also extend it right over here and bring all this out and I'll show you guys afterwards after I get it cut down. And then as we turn, you guys can see I already got some of it knocked down just the other day, but I'm gonna continue to cut in from here all the way back and around. So almost like a kidney shaped food plot, okay? Uh, this year we'll have radishes at this particular plot. I also have a stand sitting in the trees right there, if you can see it, probably not. It's probably focusing on my finger. So between a tree stand for archery season, and then this is a great wine for my kids uh, during gun season. I'm not much of a gun hunter, but they truly enjoy it. So we're not gonna take that away from them because of my preference, whatever it takes to get our kids out hunting. So let me get this field taken down. I'll show you what that looks like. And again, guys, just to give you an idea of the equipment I'm running, I have the Kubota L3901, okay? It's almost 40 horsepower. It's a bigger tractor. It's still a utility tractor. It's not a huge tractor, um, but this thing will do everything I need it to do. And actually I didn't even bring it out because I know there's no stones or anything out here currently. I have my actual, um, <laughs> this is what I mow the front of my yard with. So I didn't bring out the brush hog. I just got the finishing deck on it because there's no stones. I'm not worried about hitting logs or anything like that. This was a food plot, just this section last year, right here. Uh, and none of this was a food plot. So we're gonna, we're gonna extend it quite a bit. So let me get cutting and then we'll show you what happens after we're all done with the cutting. All right guys, so about 45 minutes later, I am done here for the moment. So what did we accomplish? Quite a bit, 45 minutes. And again, this is with a tractor. Um, it's nice being able to upgrade over the years as opposed to doing it by hand. And we were able to put in roughly, I'd say pretty close to an acre large food plot expanding from last year's quarter acre to this year's acre. And you guys can see how it's all cut down currently. Um, so what's next? Well. I'm going to go ahead and do a light roundup out here. Um, I'm not going to mix it according to the directions. I'm going to back off just a few ounces of roundup to water. And I'm going to round up the entire area. And you guys can see the other side from here. And yeah, so we got a pretty good sized food plot. And we got our, our blind right where we want it to be to where the kids should be able to get a shot on a deer with no questions asked. Um, 
we don't want to go too big. That's one thing to keep in mind. You want to have a draw. If you go too big, if you're putting in an acre and a half, two acres, anything like that, I mean, we're in mid-Michigan where there's enough agriculture in the area that you can potentially just drive the deer elsewhere. So by giving them something, a sweet treat, more or less, turnips, radishes, uh, maybe some other fall mixtures that are out there and available to you all, by giving them something different than the normal beans, corn, or anything like that, you're more likely draw more deer into an acre or smaller size food plot. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to the house and I may get to it today. I may not. Um, I haven't quite decided because I got one more food plot still to bring under later on. Um, but I may round this up today, right? And I want to give it seven days for that roundup to work. And then I'll come in and till everything. Seven days is all you need before you can plant fresh seed after doing a light roundup. So let's go ahead, head back to the house, and I'll show you guys that mixture when I get to that point. And that way you guys can use that same mixture at your food plots at your home. We're in the second phase of setting up our food plots. Um, as you guys can see, this is the food plot I cut down with you all on camera the other day. And we got some new growth. We've had quite a bit of water. Um, <clears throat> my weed killer solution that I was telling you guys about, I already got it mixed because I mixed it back at the house, but it's 1.5 ounces to, <clears throat> to one gallon of water. And it's a 41%, just a general weed killer. And I don't advocate for any name brand per se, um, but I did get it at the local tractor supply company. It's, it's relatively cheap and it does everything I need it to do. The idea isn't to kill the weeds and keep the weeds down. That's not the idea. The idea is to kill the weeds and neutralize the weed development or the weed development from the root. And then I can turn over the soil and simply plant. I'm still going to have weeds throughout the year that come up in the crop, depending on what I'm plant planting, right? Uh, with radishes and turnips, you don't get as much weed because the seed takes quick and it's a shade. It's a broad leaf uh, plant and it'll keep the weeds at bay. But when you start doing like buckwheats or beans or anything like that, do not expect this to be your solution to those weeds. Um, as a matter of fact, there are different weed controls you can use on those food plots that we can talk about at a later time. So I'm out here. I got it all set up, ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this field and, and get it done so that I can go inside and get ready for a trip uh, to Louisiana this week. Stay tuned. The next thing you guys will be seeing is me rotating crop and getting ready to lay down seed. All right, guys. So we got everything prepped on our food plots that we talked about. We went ahead and we rounded up everything after we brush hogged it all down. We got it tilled in and we got some beautiful food plots. I'll have you all take a look. Uh, so this is just one small plot that we'll be using. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and the seed of choice is the northern edge. Uh, at this particular little plot, I'm going to go ahead and put in turnips. The other one I'll put in radishes. Um, it's a late season. However, we do find in the early season that some of the foliage will be tore up by the deer, which is great. Um, the idea is to provide deer with substance during those harsh uh, times of the year, such as the dead of winter or anything of that nature. So ideal... Um, seed you guys be cautious on what you buy there are a lot of big manufacturers out there that put out some pretty okay seed but this is a, a local company um and we've had really good success with it really really good success for what it is in comparison to some of the bigger names so um let's go ahead and like we talked about earlier guys i'm not out here with the spread or anything i am hand casting all this so we'll go ahead and start hand casting and uh hopefully we're pleased by the time we're all said and done so that's it guys like i literally just laid down about a quarter acre and it took me 10, maybe 20 minutes on the long side of things to get a quarter acre of plot put in via hand casting. So it's not like it's overly time consuming. So to walk through everything we've done uh, one last time, we went ahead, we brush hogged down our, our food plots. Then we sprayed it with a generic Roundup from uh, a local store here. We let it set for about seven days. I came back with a rototiller. 
and rototilled the entire area. We're heading over to the second plot right now. And then we simply waited a few days. We let some rain settle in. Um, and then I came back out with my northern edge turnips at that plot, radishes at this next. And we're hand casting the seed. So I know we talked about it and a lot of people think I'm crazy, but I used to do this all by hand, all of them. I used to come out with a sickle, a weed whacker, and a lawnmower, break down the weeds in the area. I used to get a just a pump hand sprayer. I went ahead and sprayed the area. And then I came out with like a small rototiller, like a two by rototiller, and actually rototilled rototil the area um, all by hand. And people thought I was nuts, but again, now that I have the means of the larger equipment, um, not only do I appreciate the larger equipment, but it, you know, I cut I cut the time down in half. That being said, it should not deter you if you do not have a tractor, a large rototiller, a sprayer set up, an ATV. You should not be deterred from putting a food pot in. Um, you guys should still do those things, and it's super handy. Um, it's a it's a great skill set to learn. You're going to learn a lot about the patterning of the deer. You're going to just spend that much more time out uh, in the field, and you know that's really what it's all about. It's just spending time out. So um, you guys can see I've made it over to the big uh, food pot over here. I'm going to go ahead and start hand casting seed here. We'll see how long it takes. See you. So once again, low shout out to Standish Milling as we have the Northern Edge radishes. These things come in like they're freaking crazy, man. They're huge. Um, softball size radishes, the deer. Um, I'm not getting a ton of deer on these during bow season. Um, but again, that's not what my food plots are really about. First of all, it keeps weeds down. So I have shooting lanes that have been provided via the radishes, right? It keeps the weed growth down. So I have really nice... Uh, shooting lanes when you guys can see a lot of my land is covered in five to six foot tall weeds right um, so this provides a really nice area for the deer to walk through and for one of my children to crack off a shot but more importantly I'm providing nutrients to the deer uh, during the dead of winter the radishes the turnips those are all what we call a digging food pot right they're a root that the deer find highly attractive when there's so much snow cover and the green is gone so that's what we're doing we're providing a nutrients to the animal uh, when a lot of other nutrients have kind of been expended for the year so we're gonna go ahead start hand casting once again and uh i'll let you guys know how long this takes so that's it uh, this entire food pot's put in in 22 minutes by hand. Not a big ordeal whatsoever. Um, you know, it, it's about giving back. The whole process of hunting. Uh, not only are you taking something from Mother Nature, the good Lord above, um, whatever you may call it. The more important thing is that we can go ahead and contribute to the success, to the success of the animals out here in the in the wild. So it, it's a respect. It's not just we take and take and take, but we have to give. Um, me personally, I, I give time. I give love to the land, effort. Um, and I start seeing bigger deer, more mature deer, uh, as we tend to pass up some of the younger deer as well, um, which makes for a super exciting hunt. So it is a gift that keeps on giving, which is super exciting. Um, and it's fun to watch, right? Uh, you never hear a person who's into gardening complaining about going out and pulling weeds all that often. They, it's part of the process. They love it. And the land provides for them. We're doing the same thing. We're providing for the land. Um, it's good for the soil. In addition, it's great for the wildlife, uh, whether it be turkey, deer, what have you. Uh, a lot of animals will benefit from these food pots as we put them in. So don't just be a taker. Uh, occasionally, if you can, give back whatever that may be, going out and planting trees, uh, putting in food plots if you have the land to do so. Um, hopefully, you guys find these videos helpful. And the process really isn't all that daunting unless we are doing it manually by, by hand. And to be honest, you can knock out a quarter acre a day. You really can. It's, it's 
it may be labor intensive, but it's worth it. It gives you a hell of a workout. Um, and as long as you stay positive during the process, you're going to be in good shape, guys. So to all of you guys this year, uh, we wish you the best out there in the woods as whitetail season is approaching uh, fairly quickly here in mid-Michigan. Um, and it doesn't matter where you guys are at, Ohio, Tennessee, uh, California, it doesn't matter where, where you guys are at. If you're in the outdoors and you're enjoying yourself, that's all that truly matters. Um, so God bless you guys. Stay safe out there and have a great season. Post some pictures in the comments if you can. Uh, let us know how you guys are doing and uh, what type of animal you're harvesting. We're, we're excited to see you guys do well out there. So we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.